Hello, jazz friends. How in the world are you? I'm Tom Manuel, founder and director of the Jazz Loft here in Stony Brook, New York, the East Coast's only museum, performance space, and educational institute completely and solely dedicated to the American-born art form called jazz. I'm glad you've joined us for our first look into the Jazz Loft archives. This is a little weekly series that we're going to call Behind the Scenes. And I'm in a part of the Jazz Loft that has a unique little display here. And you might be wondering what in the world a 1930s Art Deco shoe store uh, foot pedestal from Tom McCann Shoes has to do with jazz. But I'll tell you, it's a pretty unique story that this little display we have here tells quite well. And it's the story of a man by the name of Ward Melville, who is the president of Tom McCann Shoes. He got off a train stop too early with his mom. He was headed to Port Jefferson, and mom fell in love with this place called Stony Brook Village. Mr. Melville designed what became the first pre-planned shopping center in the United States of America, and this building, which has a unique history that this wall tells the story of, actually was built in 1920, and believe it or not, the part of the building I'm sitting in right now dates till around the 17, uh, late 1700s, 1770 to be precise. The part of the building you walk in when you come through our front doors was the first Stony Brook Firehouse built in 1920. And this part of the building that I am sitting in was referred to as the Old Stone Jug. It was uh, uh, belonged to the famous sea captain Jonas Smith and had a lot of different purposes when it was, believe it or not, about a quarter mile up the road behind where I'm sitting right now. Mr. Melville joined the building here when he built the town. He felt that uh, he was building a new firehouse, that this firehouse should be repurposed and become a museum. And he felt that this part of the building was important because of its history. So what a cool repurposing Go Green project, if you will, all the way back in 1940. I have a little thing that's great here on display that is an almanac from the Suffolk Museum. That's what this building was first called when it was opened. It's from 1946 and it tells the story of the Suffolk Museum, chartered in 1942 to house and display items of local historical interest and it says how, although still in the embryonic stage, contributions from people of the surrounding villages have ranged from mounted ducks to ancient patchwork quilts, from ship models to paintings by the Mount family. But little by little, work and perseverance have brought order and organization to the heterogeneous collection. It goes on to talk about the two major departments of the museum, arts and natural history, the former consisting of an exhibition of the works of the paintings, mounts, and related material, and the latter a collection of local wildlife. Also present for inspection were a number of old Chinese costumes worn in the days when Stony Brook skippers used to visit the Orient and some examples of the American Indian art. A little other interesting thing of interest, uh, if you were here at the Suffolk Museum back in the 1940s, you would have been able to, especially in the 50s, walk just across the street behind our post office to a wonderful outdoor concert venue that seated 2,000 people called the Dogwood Amphitheater. And we actually have on display many original programs from the Stony Brook Music Festival that happened throughout the 50s, 60s, and into the early 70s. And this is a great example on display currently. It's from July 11th and 12th, 1958. It's Dixieland at Dogwood, and it's autographed by many of the performers there. Some of the um, important people that were there that year, Benny Moten, Marty Napoleon, the great tenor sax man, Ben Webster, Charlie Shavers on trumpet, Conlon Hawkins on tenor sax. Other people that visited throughout those years included the great Louis Armstrong, Tony Bennett, the Benny Goodman Orchestra, Duke Ellington and his orchestra, and many others. So a great history here in this building, a firehouse built in 1920, the old stone jug, the center of the community dating back to 1770, joined and repurposed in 1940, opened officially July 7th, 1941. And here we are, 2020, 100 and 200 years later, respectively, as the Jazz Law. Come and visit Stony Brook and check it all out, and you'll see so much more of this great history on display. Thanks so much for joining me today, and please remember to support your arts organizations during this time. 
now more than ever, not for profits like the Jazz Love, need your help. And Jazz has taught us some great, great life lessons, lessons about patience, tolerance, support, unity, trust, commitment, and especially the power of the collective. Please, if you're able, visit thejazzloft.org and consider supporting our fund for jazz musicians. All donations go directly to jazz musicians who are in dire need of financial support. And our first round of donations just went out and we were able to aid approximately 15 jazz artists with checks from the Jazz Loft. If you're able to, come and join the band as we invest in hope. And remember, as Duke Ellington once said, a problem is a chance for you to do your best. So please join me next week as we have another episode of Behind the Scenes. Until we meet again, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.